It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We are in, on the ground in downtown San Francisco at the Clift Hotel at this Dell 1510 discussion forum on big data. It's the second in a series that they did. They did Boston on security. Today was on big data. And we were hosted today by Susan Etlinger from the Ultimate, Altimeter Group. Yep. Thank you for hosting. My pleasure. Kind of a raucous crowd. It was a raucous crowd. You know, there are a lot of, no shortage of opinions today. So what did you think? You know, I think it's it was fascinating because, you know, we're in a room full of people who care passionately about technology. So unsurprisingly, you get a lot of opinions that are informed by passionate love of technology. Uh, but big data is a complicated topic. And, and um, it was a good conversation. I thought you did a pretty good job uh, kind of roping everything in. Because like huh? you said, there's a lot of people with a lot of opinions. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes people went, went kind of crazy. But that was, that was the point, right? That yeah, was what yeah, we were trying yeah. to do. We like a little controlled chaos. <laughs> So in, in preparing to come to this, I watched your TED talk that you did late last year, and congratulations, it was a great talk. And there were some really interesting themes I wanted to follow up with you, so I'm sure. glad you, you stopped by. And one of them was really about, you know, we talk about the data, but I just want to grab what you said was that it's really about the importance of critical thinking, that without context, what is the data? And, and you know, having a broad base of, of information, a broad base of social skills, a broad base of education are the things that people aren't talking about enough to add context. Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a really interesting conundrum because when you think about big data, it really is about technology um, from a technologist's perspe perspective. And we talk about how we process it, and we talk about how we store it, and we talk about how we share it, and all these other things. But what makes big data interesting, or this idea that we call big data, um, which is sort of an imperfect name for it, is that it could potentially give us the potential to understand a little bit about the world that we live in. So whether it's ourselves as citizens, ourselves as patients, ourselves as consumers, um, that's kind of where it could go. But uh, we, we really talk about it in a very technology-centric way. Yeah, and it doesn't seem like people talk enough about the context and enough about li little fun things, you know, how to lie with statistics. You know, change the scale on the XY axis and the slope of the curve looks really flat or Absolutely. really steep. And so there's a lot of these kind of softer issues that I don't know get enough attention or are we just not far enough down the path or that will come? What do you think? Yeah, I don't think they're softer. I mean, I think if you, th if you think about what big data is and the way that Gartner describes it, a lot of it comes from human expression, human speech, imagery, things like that. And it, there's really no technology today that will take an image and tell you the meaning of that image. You know, we, we're further along with language, but even when you think about language, there are arguably a thousand languages in the world. And even if you think about maybe say the top 100 or the top 50 from a business point of view, words mean different things in different contexts. And so this is why it's important when you think about big data that to understand a lot of it is unstructured, meaning it just comes like a tweet or a post or a blog post or a news story or a chat log in a call center. It, it's just the way people communicate. And pulling the meaning out is actually more complicated than you think. Yeah, it, it, it's my, my favorite example of kind of context is, is Saturday Night Live, right? Everything they say on Saturday Night Live is so politically incorrect that if you said it on almost any other forum, you get in trouble. But if you say the same words on Saturday Night Live, same words, everyone knows the context. It's a spoof, it's a farce, it's right, funny. Right. And it's taken um, as comedy, as it's intended to be taken. And it seems like that nuance is so, so important and just does not seem to be a big part of the conversation. It is. I mean, if you think about, for example, a tweet, it's 140 characters. And so, you know, constantly people are just getting themselves in trouble on Twitter. If you think about an article, you know, a news a, a new story or an article or a, um, even an opinion piece, you know, you have a little bit more time to upset everybody. Right. in your audience. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of pieces, so I know you've got some new uh, research out recently about what are we doing with this big data. Give us a little uh, update on what you yeah, did and sure. some of your findings. So, you know, the thing I've been really focused on and thing I'm going to continue to focus on for the remainder of the year and probably the rest of my natural life is how do we extract insight from data in a real way? Not just like 
somebody's age and how many times they went to the store and how many times they bought detergent and you know what could that possibly mean about them but actually real insights about people's propensity to buy to be well to get sick to vote a certain way to do all sorts of other things and so the insight piece is really important because it means that we have to think um, that you know, business people need to think in a more sort of computational way to to be able to communicate with technologists, and technologists need to think in a more business-oriented way. So the insight is is really important, and then the other piece is how do we do that in a way that actually engenders trust? You're right, right. The trust issue came up a lot today, yeah. And kind of this trade-off between privacy um, and trust, and giving me enough information. And one of the younger uh, people in the audience said, "I actually want to give you more information so you can give me better suggestions." Um, so it's certainly not settled by. Any any stretch of the imagination and kind of the trade-off of value for privacy too I think is very different based on generations and people's experience today or maybe just time of you know time of the day time of life where you are so if I'm walking down the street you know I sort of maybe expect there might be a camera there if I'm in a restroom I may not expect there to be a camera right, there right. if I'm shopping back in the grocery again. store yeah exactly <laughs> back to context or like you know you think about teenagers teenagers want tons of privacy I mean it's hard being a teenager you know you get into your 20s maybe you want different kinds of information information, different kinds of, you have different expectations, right, so right. we have to kind of figure that out. Except the clown teenagers share more stuff than anybody and they shouldn't be sharing, so <laughs> tell your kids or not, not be careful what they Snapchat share. Or right? not, Oh, that's right, away, supposedly, right? right? So, Susan, thanks for moderating sure. the panel. Thanks My for taking pleasure. a few minutes with us. Uh, good luck with the, uh, with how do, how do they get the uh, report? Oh, you can just go to, go to altimetergroup.com and uh, download it there. Okay, awesome. So thanks again. I'm Jeff Frick. We're on the ground at the Cliff Hotel in San Francisco at the Dell 1510 Big Data Discussion. Thanks for watching theCUBE.